Good morning and welcome to Luke's Place with St. Luke's Worshiping Community. We're here, myself, Canon Adele Miles, with Matthew Pope and Max Arvidson, offering a service of morning prayer. If you're looking for the material to follow along, you can find that by clicking the link in the description box below, or you can go to our website, www.lukesplace.com, under Worshipping Resort Community to find the um, order of service for this morning. Have you believed, Thomas, because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He gave us new life and hope by raising Jesus from the dead. Rejoice then even in your distress. We shall be counted worthy when Christ appears. God has claimed us as his own. He called us from our darkness into the light of the, his day. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. This is Psalm 16. Protect me, O God, for I take refuge in you. I have said to the Lord, you are my Lord, my good above all others. All my delight is upon the godly that are in the land and upon those who are noble among the people. But those who run after other gods shall have their troubles multiplied. Their liberation, the libations of blood I will offer, nor take the names of their gods upon my lips. O Lord, you are my portion and my cup. It is you who uphold my lot. My boundaries enclose a pleasant land. Indeed, I have a goodly heritage. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I have set the Lord always before me. Because you are at my side, I shall not fall. My heart, therefore, is glad, and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. 
for you will not abandon me to the grave, nor let your Holy One see the pit. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy, and in your hand are pleasures forevermore. A reading from the Book of Acts. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. You that are Israelites, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man arrest, attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders and signs that God did through him among you. As you yourselves know this man, handed over to you according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death, because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand so that I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades, or let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Fellow Israelites, I may say to you confidently of our ancestor David, that he both died and was buried and his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would put one of his descendants on the, his throne. Foreseeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying, He was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that all of us are witnesses. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the first letter of Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genesis of your faith, being more precious than gold that, though perishable, is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and in glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him, and even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy, for you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvations of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with, us, with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. 
If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Oh. 
What a week it has been. How to make sense of so many earth-shattering events. The shell-shocked disciples are cowering together behind closed and locked doors. It's the evening of the first Easter. The disciples have been on an emotional roller coaster and here they are still reeling from Mary Magdalene's news that the tomb where Jesus had been laid is empty. And Mary said she saw Jesus and he spoke with her. How's that even possible? So, so the disciples have come together to try to find some comfort from each other and to try to make sense of what is happening to them. They have locked the doors because they are afraid those who crucified Jesus will now come looking for them. Then suddenly, into their troubled midst, Jesus enters. Their locked doors and their fears cannot keep him out. Peace be with you, he says. And suddenly, everything is okay. They still don't understand, but they're no longer afraid. Somehow, Jesus has not abandoned them after all. They aren't alone. Peace be with you he says, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. And then he breathed on them the breath of God. This would be a great ending to the story, and the disciples all lived happily ever after. No problems, no doubts, no struggles, but that would be a fairy tale. Fairy tales are great, you know the ones. Fairy tales are the stories where the characters survive all kinds of trials and tribulations and live happily ever after. Any of us who watch the evening news know that life is no fairy tale. Life is full of disasters, suffering, and unhappy endings. In fact, the evening news would have you believe there are no happy endings. We all know that neither the world presented in fairy tales nor life as presented on the evening news tells the whole story. The real life that we live gets lived somewhere in the middle between fairy tales and what the media presents. Real life has moments of deep anguish and moments of indescribable joy, marking the peaks and valleys in the everyday plane of our existence. That was as true for the disciples as it is for us. So you see, Jesus' appearance to his disciples was not the end of the story after all. It's, it was more like the beginning. Jesus didn't say, enjoy the peace and stay here where you're safe. Instead, Jesus said, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. That continues to be Jesus' message to us even now in our time of pandemic and social distancing. As we celebrate a much mute, in a much muted way, the annual observance and remembrance of Jesus' resurrection, we find ourselves gathered behind closed doors in much the same way as the disciples were. It seems so easy for us to lock the doors against all that we fear, desperately trying to hold on to what feels safe and familiar. We live in a world that is changing at a breathtaking pace, and so if we can just stay behind our closed doors where it is peaceful, perhaps everything will be okay. That's a nice thought, but I have never known God to work that way. Instead, God invites us to let go of all that holds us captive, 
and to step out in faith, trusting as our guides the abiding presence of God in Jesus and the gift of the Holy Spirit. Letting go and reaching out in faith, trusting in God's faithfulness, can sometimes be quite dramatic, like Paul's blinding experience on the road to Damascus. But at other times, it can be quite simple. Letting go of the limits which chain us can be as simple as giving up the shrines of our preconceived ways of doing things, finding new ways to put God at the center, new ways to make a difference in God's world. Letting go is part of our faith journey. It requires faith in God's faithfulness, faith in our relationship with God. Letting go doesn't require perfect faith. Thank heavens for Thomas whose struggle with faith was met by Jesus' compassion and understanding. After all, it's not how much faith we have that is important. No, what is important is that we open ourselves to the risk of faith, open ourselves to the grace of God, open ourselves to communion with the risen Christ. What is important is our willingness to embrace the resurrection life, to become, through God's grace, a new creation, serving God in everything that we do. This letting go in faith is the Christian vocation which we share together. God greets us with peace, turning our fear and reluctance into rejoicing, and sending us out to minister together to God's people wherever we find them. So take heart and step out in faith. Like David, take delight in our strength that comes from God. I saw the Lord also before me, he said, for he is at my right hand so that I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope, for God will not abandon my soul. God will not abandon us. God has made known to us the ways of life. God makes us full of gladness, for God goes with us in all that we do. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and the great commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. In joy and hope, let us pray to the source of all life, saying, Hear us, Lord of glory. That our risen Savior may fill us with the joy of his holy and life-giving resurrection, let us pray to the Lord, Hear us, Lord of glory. That isolated and persecuted churches may find fresh strength in the Easter, Easter gospel, let us pray to the Lord, Hear us, Lord of glory that he may grant us humility to be subject to one and another in Christian love. Let us pray to the Lord, hear us, Lord of glory, that he may provide for those who lack food, work, or shelter. Let us pray to the Lord, hear us, Lord of glory, that by his power wars and famine may cease through all of the earth. Let us pray to the Lord, hear us, Lord of glory. For the whole world, as we share in the effects of COVID-19, for essential service workers, healthcare workers, researchers, those who are ill, those who are quarantined or in isolation, and those who are abandoned and alone in this time, that he may reveal the light of his presence to the sick, the weak, and the dying, that they may be comforted and strengthened. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory that he may send the fire of the Holy Spirit upon his people, that we may bear faithful witness to his resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. 
risen Christ, for whom no door is locked, no entrance barred. Open the doors of our hearts so that we may seek the good of others and walk the joyful road of sacrifice and peace to the praise of God, the source of all life. Amen. Gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray as our Savior taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>